Welcome to Startup Pack. This is our series about coding for entrepreneurs. I'm a firm believer that even if you aren't the one doing the coding in your organization, that learning to code will help you to more effectively manage your team and your product. So I think every entrepreneur should learn to code. Plus, you might find you enjoy it anyways. Today, we're gonna to dig into our third coding sample. We'll use Visual Studio to build a simple web API using C Sharp, and now we're going to connect it to a MongoDB. It's a good, which is a good, simple, lightweight document storage database. We'll do all of this managing it with Swagger. So let's go ahead and dig in. Welcome to Startup Hack. My name is Spencer Tomlinson. I am the CEO and co-founder of Clean Router, as well as many other products. Here are some lessons that I've learned building a successful business while challenging startup norms. My challenge is to push you to rethink startup success. Welcome to Startup Hack. All right, let's go ahead and dig in here. So what you can see here should start should be starting to look really familiar. So we start off with our program, uh, CS, which is where everything starts. Now you notice that uh, we're starting off and we're create, configuring a bookstore database settings, which actually gets the, the section for the bookstore database. We're actually adding then a singleton with a bookstore service, the book service, excuse me. This time we are gonna be using Swagger, so we're including Swagger. And we're uh, starting up and running the application. Now, the different classes that we have in this time is we have our, our basic controller again. And so if you hit control and MO, it actually will collapse all of the individual methods. And so with individual methods collapse, you can see we're gonna have a single get, a get with an ID, a post, a put with another ID, and then a delete. So these are the same methods we've been working with now for the last couple of days. Um, the, the implementations are gonna be slightly different. Now our models is we have a simple book, uh, which has uh, you know an ID, a book name, price, category, and author. And then we're going to see that the other model is for the bookstore database settings. And so this is an important set to now make it so that we can connect to our uh, MongoDB. And then we have the book service. So this is a service manager, and this is a, a process you're gonna see us start to use pretty frequently where a service does a lot of our heavy listing for us. So this service actually connects us to the DB and um, connects us to the database and is what actually then will work between and so you uh, does act the actual lifting between it so the get the get async for a particular id so these map one and one to our um, controllers so in general you go from the your request is going to go through the service layer or excuse me through the controller layer into the service layer. And normally you'd then have a service layer and a repository layer. Those are pretty standard uh, pattern for uh, following a controller, service, and, and repository layer. In this case, we're kind of skipping the repository layer because it's literally one line of code, but we can put some breakpoints here and see uh, how this works. So let's go ahead and uh, fire this up. And we're gonna have, in here is also some of our sample requests that we're gonna use a little bit later. One of the other things to notice is in here is our app settings. So the app settings.json, this tells us how we're going to connect to uh, the MongoDB. Now you wanna make sure that you install Mongo and I'll include the links here, but Mongo, in my case for Windows, but it, they have it for pretty much every um, everything out there, Linux, Mac, Windows, etc. But you download and install Mongo. It was really simple to install. Uh, it took me just a minute. And download it, you go to here to the download center and uh, download it and run it. And then once you download and install Mongo, it'll also come with this tool called Mongo Compass. And we'll talk a little bit about how this works here and it'll make a little bit more sense in a minute. But this allows us to connect to the database and visualize what we're seeing in the database. So um, now we're gonna be able to start to put these together. So let's go ahead and fire, off, uh, fire this program off here. And we're gonna throw some breakpoints in here first to, uh, so we can track through our, our get. So we'll fire this guy up and we will see Swagger come up here in a second, so. Okay, so let me drag uh, our Swagger over here. Now, in our Swagger here, we see again, this should look pretty familiar by now. We have the get post, the get with the ID, the put with the ID and the delete via an ID. So let's start off with trying to fire up our get. Now, I wanna show you a couple of other things here too. So you can see the get first comes into our uh, controller and that's gonna call into our service. 
So we're going to hit F, uh, F11 and step into that. Now you can see it's hitting into the service layer, which is actually going to connect to our books collection. So I'm going to hit F11 again. This actually goes into the books collection and returns uh, an object of type, you know, this type book, right? It's going to return a list of books. And this then returns to the screen and we can see our, our list of books, which right now is just one. Now, I kind of, I was testing this before, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. We're going to delete a book right now because uh, we want to we want to clear it out and I want to show you our clean database. So different than yesterday when we were running this and our database, um, uh, you know, was deleted every time we would uh, restart the application. In this case, the database actually stays around between times because it's a persistent storage. So even though I stop the application and run, uh, you know, and run it again, or if I stop the application and run it, I'm going to kill my breakpoints here now. Um, so if I stop the application and run it, you'll see that it will um, it'll continue to persist. So our bookstore is now empty. So let's use a couple of these samples that we have here, and let's insert our first couple books. So this one will get um, this one is going to post a book, and when we try this out, when you hit this initially try, it's going to format this object right here. But this isn't going to be in the right format because it's looking for an ID to be an int and some other things that won't be formatted right. So I've included a set of uh, JSON post response here, sampler requests. So here's a couple of them. So we're gonna copy this, and for an JavaScript, for JSON or uh, object, which is a JavaScript object notation, you always start your objects with a curly brace and end with a curly brace, and then you do a comma separated between each of the different uh, parameters, uh, the attributes in the object. So first attributes object is book name. So we're gonna call it clean code because this is a, uh, we're, we're clean router. Now the next one is the price. It's a pretty pricey book. Of course the category is gonna be on computers and the author is gonna be, we're gonna make the author me. I'm gonna be the author. So we're gonna hit execute. So this executed correctly. And now, in fact, I think I just executed it twice. So now if we come back up here and retrieve, hey, look at that. We had two books called the same thing. So these even have, uh, you notice that it changed the ID on these. And so the ID is something that gets inserted when we insert into the database. And so that's set by Mongo. Now, I want you to be able to understand the concept of database a little bit. So even if I go and I stop the applications, the application isn't even running. The database is something that's running in a Windows service that's persisting outside of the application. So I can actually go here and I'm gonna connect to my database here. And now I'm going to go look at databases. And so the admin, the config, and the local, those come with it. But this bookstore is the one that we just created. So now you can see that the average uh, you know, document size is 100 bytes. It gives us kind of some information. We click in here a little more. Wow, look, it's those books that we just created. Now I can edit them in here. Um, and so let's go ahead and edit this because we... I'm going to call this another, and we're going to say this one was 99 bucks. We're going to update this. So now, see, I'm even updating this, and this is in this document store. So this is a, a MongoDB is a, what they call a document data store. So each of these is a document, and it's formatted just as a JSON object. object. And so it visualizes the same way that you'll notice that we did in our Swagger, right? So um, now the, my program is not even running. So it obviously isn't in the memory like we were running yesterday. This is actually connecting to an existing database. And that's one of the advantages. And pretty much every web app nowadays will always be running off of a database. And so um, it's pretty common and pretty standard uh, for your applications to be built off of a database of sorts. So um, now let's go ahead and start up our application again. It's going to connect back to that same database, that MongoDB that we had. And it always wants to seem to open up into a different window. So let me drag it over here. And this, um, and this database now will allow us to, so now we can be able to connect and see, sorry, there when at work is talking to me. Um, we'll be able to see how these, uh, how these are running. So if we do this, we can now see that the database persisted between and see that that update that I made, right, with this uh, another clean co coding and the data and the price change and everything, that now reflects 
um, even though this was outside of the application. So this is a really good simple application to show a very basic way to connect with a Mongo database. Now, if we want to uh, get just one of these particular books, we can grab this ID. We can hit try out. Now I'm gonna put a breakpoint in here so you can show you. So if we see this uh, find here, so this find is how it's gonna go and get that, that book out of the database. And hit execute. So you can see it hit right here at the find. So it's gonna find where X uh, is equal to the ID. It's gonna grab the first or default of these. This will then return that value. Come back to here. It's gonna check if the book is null so we can look and see this book. See, this is that book object. It's, pop, it's, hydrating, it's hydrating this model here. So our ID, our price. So this object right here, this class that's creating, this class is here is creating an object. And this object is what's getting hydrated or populated as we look it up from the database. And it's checking now if it's null, because if so, it would return a not found error. But in our case, our book is found, and it sends this off. So let's show you what happens if we try to look up a book that doesn't exist. So let's just try one, two, three, four, because that doesn't exist in our database. So now, if I hit this, hmm, we didn't hit our breakpoint. Hang on a minute. So if I hit this one, And now I lost my window. If we hit this one, you can see that we are getting, so let's try that again. Try it out. See, error response to status is 404, because it doesn't even recognize that as valid. Uh, it won't even let me get into, the, into this. So, oh, we lost our breakpoint. That was part of the problem. Let's try that again. All right. Uh, we're missing something here. So uh, I think it's upset because this, uh, this ID is not even coming through correctly. Let's, uh, let's take pause here and take a look. Okay, I figured out what was going on. So because of this attribute that is decorated on the controller here, it's only going to match this parameter here on our controller if this ID is of length 24. Now, if I remove this part of it, it would actually match to any length, but it's actually only gonna match to length something that's of length 24. So what I did was I actually copied this one up here and then I changed the last couple digits here. So we can see that our ID is this. It's gonna come in here. It's gonna to try to find the book. Now the book is now gonna be null. So if the book's null, then it's gonna return a not found error. Now this isn't a very robust system, so I don't think it really even knows what to do with it. And it just actually ends up throwing a 404 because it says it's not found. But uh, ultimately, actually, I think uh, this would normally we'd want to handle this just slightly better. But this is a pretty rudimentary example. So that shows you an example about how you uh, would walk through to get one. Now, let's see if we wanted to update one. Um, and so in order to get to update one, we're going to want to get one. So let's uh, grab one of these guys. And let's say that we want to do uh, put, which is going to do our update. And we're going to change the body here. And then we got to grab this ID and use the ID. So now let's go ahead and let's put a breakpoint here at where our update is. So now what the update's going to do is we're going to fire this guy off. Comes in here. So it's what it's trying to do is saying, hey, this is the ID. And then this is the book that we want to update. And so if you look at this in the debugger here, you can see that it shows all of the different attributes to what we put in there, right? Now, what it's going to do is it's going to try to go and get that book for starters. So first it tries to go and get the book, but so it, it will find the book based on that ID. If the book was null, then it would return an error, but instead it takes the ID and sets it back to the ID to update. Then it's gonna update this ID with this book and come back and do that. So if we go now here and query this, we would actually see, so, uh, so uh, let's fetch this again here. So we'd see that these actually didn't change. So, and that's exactly right. So now we return this and it comes back and it successfully is updated. Now, if we wanted to delete a book, we actually started our example with deleting the book. So again, very rudimentary and simple design um, and definitely you know a lot of things that you would build out from here. But this is a great example of an out of the box web API that works with MongoDB 
and allows you to do some very simple data storage that will actually persist between. And so this is a great example of a very simple web app. We now have an app here because we actually have our storage, we have the endpoints, uh, we don't really have any authentication, so usually an app would denote some kind of authentication. But this is a really good little starter app for getting started for writing some of your first code. Now, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to keep bringing you a lot of these coding updates. Also, make sure you go back and watch videos that we've done before because uh, if you jumped right into the third one, you might be kind of a little lost. So make sure you go back and watch the first two. And make sure you uh, like and subscribe to all of our channels because we bring a lot of great information. Make sure you also like and subscribe to Clean Technology because we bring you a lot of, of the latest news and a lot of greatest updates. And uh, make sure that you're keeping your kids safe by protecting them with the clean router as well as the clean phone. They're fantastic. Help keep your kids safe on the go and you can monitor all of your kids' usage. Thanks and have a good one.